and then the monitor will be on standby. It's not, it will not be functioning, it will not be alarming, it will not give you a headache. Once you actually have the patient, you just touch the screen and then it will be operating again. Okay. Okay? So just keep it plugged in the electricity and then on standby when there is no, when there is no patient connected. Okay? Even though if you have a patient connected to the monitor, okay, and you want to put the monitor on standby for the monitor not to alarm. So maybe you want to uh, uh, do uh, morning care for the patient, you want to do positioning, you want to change the leads, okay? Once you disconnect the patient, the monitor will keep on alarm. Okay, so if you don't want that, you just can keep, put the monitor on standby so it will not alarm. If you want to take the patient for blood test for the bathroom for a walk whatever it is you just put the monitor on standby so it will not alarm while the patient is not connected to it okay okay now let's talk about the alarming system so here our alarm setup we have two sides of the alarming system we have the alarm limits and we have the priorities so the alarm limits is basically of course the lower limit and upper limit for each parameter and whatever is in between is considered the normal range right so for example the heart rate is from 50 to 150 for an adult patient so if the heart rate of the patient goes below 50, the monitor will alarm, indicating bradycardia. If it's above 150, the monitor will alarm, indicating tachycardia. So the monitor will not just alarm, it will give you the diagnosis of any alarm. Okay, so uh, arrhythmias, it will tell you this is VTAC and, and alarm, uh, tachycardia, desatting, whatever the uh, diagnosis is, it will give you the diagnosis on a box in the screen, and it will alarm as well, okay? The priorities, uh, of course, uh, they are designed so to differentiate between alarms because not all alarms are the same. We have low priority, medium, high, and we have escalating. So low uh, is uh, determined, of course, by the uh, color of the alarm. So the alarm of the low uh, alarm is blue, the medium is yellow, and the high is red. Okay, And let us differentiate, let me tell you a very important info about differentiating between low, medium alarms and high alarms on the other hand. So high alarms have a, a special feature that's called latching alarms, okay? So what do we mean by latching alarms? Latching alarms means that uh, if the alarm is, uh, uh, so here we have the priority, right? So uh, uh, bradycardia, PR is low, the pulse rate is low, it's escalating, so you can put it high, medium, or escalating, okay? So if I put it medium or low, okay? That means if the pulse rate of the patient goes bradycardia, goes below 50, the monitor will alarm. And and it will flash in either uh, low, uh, blue, or medium, yellow, okay? But if the patient pulse rate goes back to normal range, the alarm will stop automatically, okay? So this, is, this goes for escalating for, for low and medium. If it's high, even if the patient's pulse rate goes back to normal range, the alarm will not stop, even for the next year, okay? until you actually come check your patient and then acknowledge the alarm okay so you need to silence the alarm otherwise it will keep on alarm okay because it's high alarm high alarm you need to actually come and acknowledge the alarm okay so you need to check the patient and then check the monitor just put the silence or acknowledgement uh, button just press on it and then it will silence the alarm okay the alarm will not come back again but if you don't do that the alarm will keep on alarming okay so here we have uh, the arrhythmias, for example. So it's a full uh, license for uh, the arrhythmias. It will tell you the diagnosis and it will alarm. We have the ACE, the Vita, BFib, and Vita. These are lethal arrhythmias, so they are all high. You can change them. Also, if you are putting the monitor on silence, it will break through the silence if one of these happens and it will still alarm. Here we have really nice features for any arrhythmia, actually. So uh, it will uh, create a snapshot and print on alarm. That means that, for example, ACE still happens. Of the monitor, if you put the tick on, the monitor will automatically create a snapshot. A snapshot is basically just like your smartphone screenshot, okay? So it will create a, a, a screenshot and save it on the monitor automatically. Uh, print on alarm is, is the same, so uh, I guess the engineers already connected the monitors to the printer, okay? To the uh, nursing station printer. So if a happens, the monitor will send an, a print order to the printer automatically and it will print whatever is going on on the screen, meaning the a Okay, and you can choose to do these options for any ventricular alarms or atrial alarms as well. Okay. Okay. Now let's do the monitor setup. So if you want to add any uh, parameters to, on the screen, if you want, or you want to remove any parameters from the screen, you press on the screen setup. Okay, just like we just added the respiratory rate on the other monitor. So screen setup, 
and then here I can look for whatever parameter I need and just put the tick on and then it will be added to the monitor. If I want to remove, for example, um, let's remove the CVP, so CVP2, okay, so now it's removed. If I want to put it again, it will be on again. Okay. Same goes for all the parameters. I can change the order. I can make the CPV, the CVP above the blood pressure. I can make the SpO2 above the uh, uh, the pulse rate, whatever it is. Okay. The only thing that I can change the order for is the ECG and heart rate. The ECG and heart rate is, are always on the top. Okay. I can add more parameters on the bottom. So double uh, height on the bottom, adding to the uh, to the screen. Okay. If I want more parameters. I don't think you will need them here in the ER, uh, just so you know, so lower parameter area off. Okay, I don't want the monitor to be clouded. I can change the colors for the parameters. You can make SPO2 pink if you want, okay? Just make sure that if you do change the colors of the monitor, make sure that you notify them for the same department, okay? Otherwise, the nurses and the doctors will get confused if the SPO2 is yellow on one monitor and it's blue on the other, okay? Um, Touch screen off, so if you press the touch screen off, the touch screen will be off for 30 seconds, so you can clean the screen, okay? Mm. Also, if you want, uh, maybe there are very uh, curious visitors or family, they want to play or with the monitor, okay? So you just put it off for 30 seconds, you'll they get frustrated, and then they'll leave it alone, okay? Uh, if you want to enable it before the 30 seconds is done, you just press on the trim knob, and then it will oh. be operating once again. Okay, otherwise after the third seconds it will be operating automatically. Okay. Uh, okay, here we have an admit and discharge also button that you can do, a standby button that you can do as well. But I think from this box it's much easier and, and clearer to access. Okay. Uh, procedures here are some of the procedures that you can do through the monitor. You can have cardiac output, which is the conventional cardiac output through the Swan Gans catheter. You can have the catheter insertion, uh, you can have the beat analysis, ST trans. Over a quarter hour. Over a quarter hour. Here we have the data and pages, now. okay, which can be very, very helpful. So you have a drug calculation button. So uh, if you have, for example, a, a drug that needs a, an equation and you forgot the equation, okay, for example, it dopamine. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's basically just like cheating. Okay. So you just press here. You find your medication. So maybe dopamine. You put the doctor order, the dosage, the patient's weight, and so on. It will calculate the infusion rate, and it will give it to you automatically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, there's a titration table. If you want to do uh, titrations for, for medications, okay, you can do a titration table here and fill it. You can print all of these data, or mm -hmm. you can save them here. You can see them and, and, and follow them. Okay. Uh, one more uh, really nice feature on the data and pages, which is the other patients. Okay, so all of the monitors are connected to uh, to each other. Okay, even if they if you don't have a central station, in one department the monitors can talk to each other through Wi-Fi. Okay, so this can be helpful if you are, uh, uh, for example, if you are handling more than one patient. So you can have two screens of two patients on one screen. Okay, so I just press on other patients, and here, uh, there supposedly the IT will connect the whole. Uh, monitors in one department so you will see the unit ER for example bed you have maybe 10 beds you will see the 10 beds and the 10 patients that are connected to each monitor so if you choose one of the patients uh, a split screen will be splitting right here okay showing you the other patients screen okay uh, if there's an alarm there you will see it here if anything happens there you will see it here as a live view you can silence the alarms for low, low and medium alarms from here. But again, the high alarms, you actually need to go there, check your patient, check the monitor, and then silence the alarm from the silence button. Okay? Now for the trends, okay, where all of the info will be stored in the, in the monitor for the past 72 hours. Okay? So we have three full days of the, uh, of the patient's info, whether they are vital signs, arrhythmias, whatever they are, events, and so on. Okay? So... Uh, here you can see the view so you can see it as graphic drawing okay you can see it as numeric as numbers okay uh, this is the vital this is the invasive lines this is the STQT temperature cardiac output gases and bis and so on okay you can print the page the time interval you can actually see minute by minute for the past 72 hours so it's basically like a live view for the past three days 
okay? Or you can see it one hour every 15 minutes, it's up to you, okay? And then you can go scroll with a, with a bar right here, okay? Because we don't have info actually, it's not scrolling, but if you have more than one page, then you can scroll back or you can scroll uh, forward, okay? So numeric, I guess, the one that you will be using the most, but here you can have events, so any other thing is, it will happen here, you can see it here. Any, any actually, any event that happens through the monitor, it will be saved here. Um, also here are the snapshots that we talked about, remember, yeah. the snapshots that are created automatically, they will be saved here. So snapshot, now I can see the snapshot right here. So either the snapshot automatically or the ones that, that are done uh, manually. How do I do a manual snapshot? Uh, the just, button down there? Yes, exactly, freeze snapshot, mm -hmm. okay? So it will freeze the waveform and it will create a snapshot and then save it in the trends again, view snapshot and I will see it here. Okay. okay? Going back to leave it at numeric, maybe I guess that's the one that you would be using the most. You can print the page, you can print any page on the monitor. Okay. Uh, print waveform, this will print the waveform only without the numbers. Uh, free snapshot again, it will create a, a snapshot uh, manually. In IBB start this one to get uh, a blood pressure reading just once, a single blood pressure reading. Uh, the NIBB auto start, this is for the cycle one. Okay, so if you set the cycle already to have the uh, reading every 15 minutes, every one hour, every five minutes, if you press that, it will follow the, uh, uh, the, the, the specific uh, algorithm or the specific uh, settings that you have put for the cycle of the blood pressure. Here, you have zero all pressures. So if you're connecting more than one uh, invasive line, the CVP arterial line, and you want to zero all of them at the same time, just press zero all pressures and it will zero all the pressures. So you can do the zero one. If you want to zero just one invasive line, so you just press on that invasive line itself. So CVP, I want to uh, zero the CVP without the arterial line. So I just press on the CVP and I see zero here. Okay, so I'll press the zero, it will zero only the CVP without the other lines, okay? Lastly, here we have, of course, the silence button, which will silence the monitor for two minutes, and it will have a countdown here in the uh, corner of the screen, okay? Now, lastly, I need to tell you about how to access any of the settings for any parameter, okay? So, if you want to do any settings for any parameter, okay, just press on the parameter itself. You can do the settings for, uh, for the parameter itself, for the alarms of the parameter, for anything of the parameter, you just press on it itself. So for example, I want to do the settings for ECG. So I press on the ECG right here, and I have all the settings for the ECG. Okay, no need to go through these menus, so just press on the parameter itself. It's, it's easier and it's much quicker. So for example, I need to change the lead of the ECG, which lead that I want to see on the screen. So lead number one, lead number two, lead number three, and so on. Uh, I want to change the uh, beat source, okay? So where I'm getting the beat from, is it from the primary uh, heart rate? Primary heart rate, that means that it's from ECG. If, if any, uh, for any reason the ECG uh, has uh, failed, then it will switch automatically to the SPO2, okay? If I want to, Take it from ECG alone, not the SPO2. If I want to take it from arterial line, from femoral line, I just press on there and then it will take the ECG from there. Okay? Uh, I can change the size, the sweep speed, and here we can have the 12 lead analysis if you are connecting the right connections to it. So if I press here, 12 lead analysis, I can see the 12 lead analysis here, and then I can print the 12 lead analysis on A4. Okay, so you can have the 12 lead ECG without actually disconnecting anything and connecting back anything again. Um, all ECG waveforms, it will show you the available ECG waveforms. So if you're connecting three, it will show you three. If you're connecting five, it will show you five, and so on. Uh, advanced here, you can do more advanced settings. So the pacemaker detection, so if you put it on sensitive, then it's gonna be more sensitive to detect the pacemakers, uh, normal or off, okay? Uh, primary heart rate source where you want to uh, uh, the heart rate source from, so antebrate or ECG, uh, the QRS with the lead analysis. So uh, my suggestion is to keep it always on multi-lead. That means that it will uh, analyze four leads at the same time and it will give you the final lead on the screen, okay? So this is very unique and very uh, very nice for, for, for GE. Uh, heart rate, here are the heart rates. You can add more uh, on the screen or you can uh, remove. Uh, these are the alarms, okay? These are the arrhythmias, okay? So everything that is related to ECG and heart rate, you will find it here, okay? So if I want to do the SPO2, this is the SPO2. So everything for the SPO2, I will find it here. 
the size, the, sw the sweep speed, the primary heart rate source, the sensitivity of the probe, if I want to put it at normal or maximum, okay? Maybe your patient is having um, maybe uh, too much dead skin around their fingers, maybe you want to put it as, at, at maximum sensitivity to actually detect the pulsations from the patient's fingers. Uh, here is the SPO2, the other SPO2. Uh, so two SPO2s can be connected to one patient. It's, it's, it's basically for more for neonatal patients, okay? Uh, they will connect two SPO2s at different sites to check, okay? So if you want to do the settings for the other SPO2, you just press here and then you will do the settings for the other SPO2. Uh, for the blood pressure, this is the blood pressure, the non-invasive blood pressure, so you press on it and you can have, actually we can have three uh, uh, three protocols for the blood pressure uh, reading. So we have the single blood pressure reading, which will take just one reading, okay? Unless you press again, and then it will take another reading. We have the cycle reading, okay? Which is here, start cycle. So you can select the cycle time. It begins from uh, three minutes, I guess. Uh, it begins from one minute, okay? Up till four hours, okay? So you can take the blood pressure every one minute, every four hours, every one hour, every 30 minutes, it's up to you. Okay, uh, and the third protocol is actually, we call it STAT, okay? So start STAT. STAT means that the monitor will uh, keep taking blood pressure reading continuously for five minutes, okay? I, I guess this can be helpful here in the ER. Maybe you have, your patient is bleeding and you have, don't have a, an invasive line or an invasive arterial blood pressure, so you can see uh, a changeable or a fluctuating uh, blood pressure readings uh, for continuous five minutes. So it will take a reading after it shows, uh, show it to you, okay? It will take another reading, show it to you, take another reading, show it to you automatically, run for five minutes, okay? If you want to take it again for another five minutes, press on it again, start stat, and it will take for another five minutes and so on, okay? Uh, of course, before taking any blood pressure readings, you need to uh, select the cuff size, okay? Because the cuff size, it will determine the infusing pressure, okay? Or the air infusement in the, in the cuff. So if you choose uh, infant or child or adult, it's different, of course, pressure. Uh, so if you choose adult or you can choose other patients and then other uh, categories and it will reflect upon whatever I have chosen. Here we have the alarm for the blood pressure. We can, I can set the alarms for the systolic blood pressure, the diastolic or the mean arterial pressure, okay? Um, same goes for any other parameter. So if I want to do the settings for the uh, respiratory rate, I press on it and then I can uh, select the respiratory rate uh, settings. So for example here, uh, this is the impedance. This is the way that the respiratory rate is, is taken. The measurements for them is through the impedance of the ECG leads. Okay, so I can either choose the figure one, which it will take from these both uh, points, okay, or this point from here to here. So it's up to you. So basically, this is the monitor. If you have any question, I'll be glad to, uh, to answer. Any questions? Um... Does the does the the adults and childs and stuff sizes for the cuffs are they like like set in stone based on the age or if we had like for example an adult but with like very small arms or something can we use a child size cuff? Yes, so not a child size cuff, but actually we have different sizes for different categories. So oh. for the adult patient, we have three cuffs. We have the small adult, the medium adult, and the large oh, adult. Oh, okay. Okay. Same goes for the for the. Uh, for the new net, so for example, we have the newborn and oh. we have the uh, above that and so on and so forth. Okay. okay, so we have the cuffs from a very, very small cuff to a very large cuff, which is that this one. This is our uh, biggest cuff for the for the mm -hmm. arms. Okay, so this is the large adult. Also, if you want, we can actually have the thigh cuff, okay, which can be very big. Okay, so all the sizes can be available. They bring the whole set for each new uh, monitor. And if oh. they want to order again, they can yeah, order. Yeah, because I remember the... sometimes we had also patients that were like, like even the large adult one didn't fit their arm. Uh, this one? Yes. Yes, it kept falling off. Okay, so maybe you want to... The thigh one, can it be put on the arm? Or do we put it on their thigh? Uh, it's preferable that you put it on the thigh. Uh-huh. Uh, the thigh one is really, really big. So I guess it will, it will fit any thigh. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, but okay. even if it doesn't fit the thigh, I guess you can use, them for, use it for the arm. Okay, okay, thank okay, you. If, if your patient is very obese. Yes. Yeah, it was an obese patient, so that's yes. why, yeah, okay. Anything else?
All good, inshallah. Yes. Inshallah. So thank you all for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.